Hey everyone, Paul here, Sam. Welcome to another video. So, this video has come about because of a discussion on last night's live show. We were talking about photographing models. Now, each week we do a section on the build show, which is titled Show Us What You Finished This Week, in which you show us your finished model. At the end, the viewers get to vote on their favourite build of the week, and the winner wins a monetary prize, £10 UMP gift voucher usually. Um, and we think some of you aren't quite doing your models justice by photography. Now, I know not everyone's a photographer. I'm not. No everyone possesses a really good camera. I don't. So I've got a, an average camera. It's a good camera for what it is. But we all own a phone. And there's some simple things we can do to improve the quality of the pictures. So I'm going to try and run through a few things today. I'm going to show how I do my pictures with my camera. The cheap photo booth I've got. How I edit them. And then I'll use the phone and show some different images of the phone and hopefully show you a quick, cheap, easy way of improving your pictures to basically show your models in their full glory and you give you the full fur uh, chance of winning that prize. Now, if you just use it for the live show, that's fine, that's up to you, but you can also carry it along for when you're showing your built models on ISM or other Facebook pages or forums or YouTube and really give people uh, a nice view of what you built. At the end of the day, for me, as a modeler, I want to see people's models. I want to see your model. I don't want to see the background like glaring through, hiding the color of your model, or, you know, I want to see the model. So I want to see, personally, what I want to see is a well-composed shot, zoomed in on the model, not, not with masses of background there, uh, we're not judging your photography skills, or we're not judging the photo as a whole. It's, it's not an art contest, it's a modelling contest. We want to see the model. So we want to see a close-up, you know, well shot, well lit, and get the most you can get out of what you built. Be proud of what you built. If there's flaws on the model, that's just one of those things. Work on that. Use that as a um, incentive to improve next time. I do. Uh, none of my builds are perfect. I've always said that. And you can see all my flaws in the videos or in some of my pictures. If you look close, I would discuss the flaw on the, the Porsche I just built. Um, but then there's the other side as well of using Photoshop to hide flaws, which I don't really agree with. Uh, there's a fault on your model. Address it. Deal with it next time. Move on. Uh, so it's a double-edged sword between editing the pictures and going too far with Photoshop, iPhoto, or any other photo imaging software there is out there. Um, because at the end of the day, we, we just want to see your model. That, that's it. I think that's where we're getting from. That's what we brought away from last night's um, chat on the live show. So I'm going to do a few pictures, show a few basic things. I've got no idea what I'm doing at all. Um, I just it's a few bits I picked up here and there of people who know, kind of know what they're talking about, um, <laughs> but I think my pictures turn out okay, uh, and you can see my models quite clearly, and hopefully it'll help you improve as well, and uh, we can all take something away from this. And yeah, let's see your models in all their glory. Let's see what we can do. Um, there we are. So let's get into it. So my booth is homemade. This is made from foam board got this off amazon it was like five sheets for 20 pounds cut to size hot glue gun together as you can see i've got led lights i've got one either side there's two on the top and there's one at the front as well and that gives me masses of light because to me light is important um when i originally made it i did have this beautiful diffusing paper proper stuff all around it, thinking, yeah, we'll diffuse the light. And the car models just look terrible. There was no shine to them. Um, so I took it out, and I pref much prefer the result to get that way. Uh, we're doing aircraft or armor. Pop that back in, and it takes away the shine if the model looks a lot better. In total, this thing probably cost me about £40 to make. The lights are the most expensive parts. Uh, I think they're about £6 each off eBay, something like that. Uh, and like I say, we've got... Throw away black card, well, thick paper on the back, which again, I got off Amazon 10 sheets for it's about 12 pounds. Uh, once it gets absolutely wrecked, it gets recycled from a little boy to do art and crafts with, and I just grab a new one, and then we go. I prefer a black background, um, 
I find it a lot easier to work with and that's what I tend to use. Got my Canon M100 and we got our subject today which is my Porsche 911 I recently finished. So two important things. Number one, make sure the car, whatever you're doing is clean. If you've got fingerprints on it, wipe them all off, give it a polish, whatever you need to do with a nice microfiber cloth. They come with a brush, it be a Tamiya one, a cheap makeup brush, whatever, and get all the dust off it just by brushing around and then get the base as well and get rid of as much dust as possible off there. Now the cars are absolute dust magnets. I'll do this and in the picture there'll still be dust, but we can deal with that in a little bit. Camera. So we are on aperture priority. Now, I know nothing about cameras. This is all gibberish to me. We're on F22, which is the F-stop. ISO 100. Uh, we've adjusted the white balance. I think it's... Uh, let's have a look if we click on it. So, it's on, like, minus... I don't know, what is it? Like, minus 0.2 or something. And all that does is it alters the brightness of it. So, I've just done it. To a point where I think, oh, that looks good. And we left it there. Like I say, this thing will do most of this for me. It's a mirrorless camera. Basically an automatic camera with some adjustments on it. And I just let it do its thing. And again, important things to do. If it's got a timer, which mine does, pop that on. Or if it's got a remote, um, let it do that as well. Now, I'm away from the model because I get depth of field that way. I think this F-stop gives me that as well. Again, I'm no camera expert, so don't be correcting me in the chat. <laughs> I'm only going on what I know. So, by coming out uh, a distance away, I can then zoom in. Like so. I'll get rid of my settings. There we are. If I zoom in like so, I'm actually going to push my model that way. It's such where I originally had it. There we are. So we've got a nice clean background. The model's well in shot. You can see my autofocus is picking up the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap the wing mirror. And that should give us nice, clean, even focus all the way through um, the model. So we're going to take a picture of this. And then we're going to take that over and edit it. So press the camera. Hold two seconds. Let go. And there we go. Okay, so there we go. That's our picture. That's our subject. Let's go take this to iPhoto or Photoshop, wherever you use. And let's get this looking as good as we can. Okay, so this is the image uh, we've literally just photographed. We've uploaded it to the iMac. We're on iPhoto, which is a free program supplied by Mac. It's not Photoshop. So it's very, very basic. But it does the job I need it to. What we're going to do is we're going to alter the image the camera's taken to make the model look like what it does to my naked eye. As I look at that now, the colour's a bit washed out. Its exposure's a little bit low. Um, and there's a few little bits and bobs. What we're going to do, we're going to alter the image to make it look like it should do to the naked eye, but not alter the model. If you want to do that, that's up to you. I don't do it because at the end of the day, you're cheating yourself. If there's a flaw in your model, embrace it, deal with it next time, improve it, move on. And next time you come around to think, that's going to show in the shot, I'll fix that. Now, I have a flaw on this model. I've left it there on purpose today. I could easily get rid of it, as I'll show you at the end. But if you go back to my original pictures on Facebook, you'll see the flaw is in the pictures. Because that's how it is. So, like I say, colour saturation's lost, so we can add that back a little bit. Uh, if I grab the model, that is about the colour we've got to my naked eye. Just looking at it again, let me get the light on and have a little look. It's hard to show you both. But if I look at that, yep, yeah, that is the colour to my naked eye. Uh, we're also the black point a bit, just to get a little bit. There we are. We're going to alter the exposure a touch. There we go. And a little bit of brightness. There we go. Now I could go the whole hog here and muck around with all this, but... I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, to be honest. <laughs> I just do these few settings. It seems to make a bit of a difference and make the model look a little bit more interesting. Uh, and that's all I do. Now, the only thing I alter is the vignette down the bottom. You can see how that works. It brings the edges darker. Now, because I've got lights at the edge, the edge of the image is brighter than the center. 
So I just do that until we get a nice even image. And that's that. And then we'll come in and we'll crop it. Now, we're not looking at your background. We're looking at your model. So lose all that background. There we are. So that's better. Nicely framed picture. Now, the only things left to get rid of there are dust spots. Now, these things are like magnets for dust. You wipe it over a cloth, you create creating static. It comes and sticks straight on it. So we've got dust there, there, there. There's there. That's actually one of the lights by the look of it. Can't quite tell. Dust spot there, there. So there's dust all over the shop. Now, this isn't a floor on the model. It's a floor on the image. So I will get rid of those. Because I've, you just literally watch me wipe it over with cloth and with the anti-static brush. And the dust still lands on it. So, in my eyes, that is perfectly acceptable to get rid of. Now, I have a spot removal tool. As you can see, I click that. The dust is gone. That, 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 that. It's a simple, quick tool. that You can go around and remove all those annoying little dust spots that have landed. These aren't flaws in the paint. You've seen this paintwork up close. You watch my video. It's damn good paintwork, even though I toot my own thing. There, uh, I'm not manipulating my model. I'm just get rid of any dust that's landed on it, which is an absolute nightmare. It really, really is. But this is a handy little tool. But this can also be uh, used to make your model look better. So if I had a big floor and a paint i could easily get rid of it with this but i don't i'd leave them in it, it's i'm cheating myself otherwise now if i look at the picture they go oh my god that's awful next time i come to take a picture uh sorry finish a model i think it's going to show in the picture so i'm going to get rid of that now so i'll spend more time polishing like we do with the lance hero 37 and we'll get rid of those floors so there we go that's it all the dust's gone i've not altered the model the model is exactly how it looks floors and all there's a floor on there we'll get to it in a minute um and that's it so the other thing then is to get rid of this dust off the bottom so again we go around we just hit it with this and again this is a pain it just lands the dust magnets these things i will literally wipe it over hit it with the brush turn around come back and there's dust on it again and this little spot removal tool is perfect for this it just cleans up the image makes it look a little bit more professional i suppose as professional as i can look and there we go, some quick, simple things, and our model looks a little bit better. Now, we can go back and look. So that's before editing, that's after, before, after. And we can see the colour is more vibrant. That's how this model looks to my eye. We've got rid of those dust spots, and we've altered some of the, the drabness of the picture out. We've made the model look like it does to my eye. I've not manipulated it or changed anything. Um, we've just made it look better now there's a floor on this model can you see where it is because i can it's here the number plate i didn't realize after spraying and i'll zoom in so you can look i had a ca mark on the top and i didn't see it we've got a little dust spot there as well uh, i didn't see it at all which is a real shame um but it's one of those things so can we get rid of that i could easily get rid of that with this tool i could come in Wipe over the top, and you'd never know it had been there. I could do that quite easily, and I could make a terrible model look great. But at the end of the day, all you're doing is cheating yourself. So for me, that stays in. And if you go and look at my pictures that have been up for about a week, is it now? They're, they're, that's still there. It is still there. Because why cheat yourself? Is that is that all gone? so that's a floor so as i said in my videos we don't use ca glue on exterior parts now we use white glue that way if anything like that happens we can wipe it off but that's it that's how i edit my videos so we've gone from that which in itself is not a bad image but we've lost our color we're covered in dust which is a nightmare with these bloody models to that and i haven't like i say i'm going to reiterate this i haven't manipulated the model I've just made the image look like it does to my naked eye. To me, that's acceptable. Um, anything else, in all, in all honesty, you're kind of cheating yourself. Work on the floors, accept them, and work on your next model um, to get rid of that floor. So for me, next time, I'll make sure this is not there. 
and that for me is a reminder of dealing with it. That's it. It's as simple as that. Right then. So not everyone can afford a fancy smancy camera. I mean, my camera didn't break the bank in reality compared to cameras. Mine was about three hundred and fifty pounds. But not everybody has that amount of money to spend on a camera. Now, one thing most of us do have is a smartphone. We have a light above our bench, a la that one. And we have a bench as well. So I'm going to take three pictures. I'm going to take one of it just on the bench, poorly lit. And then I'm going to put a background in, take a picture. Then a background in and edit the picture. And we'll see what we can get out of the phone. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just taking pictures to try and help people out there. So, number one, make sure the back of your phone, the lens, is spotlessly clean. Because if you get dust or fingerprints on that, it'll have a detrimental effect to your photos. Now, we'll take a picture like so. I'm hard to see at the minute because I'm behind here. So, we've got that there. We'll take a picture like that. Let's have a look what we've got. So there we go. It shows the shine lovely on the model. But you can't really see it well, can you? We'll have a look at these at the end. And we'll have a little chat about the difference in pictures. So that's on the uh, the bench. We can then grab um, the light and pop the light on. So now we've got more light. And then we can go back to our camera. Get a picture again. Job done. So there's another picture of it, this time in better light. So there we are. So I'm going to move that out of the way so we don't wreck it. And then all I've got here is some cheap card. It's like stock card paper from Amazon. It's dirt cheap. It is exactly what is in the back of my booth. I'm just going to move my camera over a touch. We've got the light overhead, which you're going to bring right down to the bench and forward. So the light's overhead at the front. And we're then going to pop our model in place, like so. Make sure the background's down. I'm going to grab our dust brush because there is dust. You can see the dust float around if you look closely. We're going to get rid of as much dust as possible. Dust really is a car modeler's enemy all the way around. And then we're going to take a picture. Like so. And the picture a little bit further away. Like that. So we've got a well lit picture. And a picture from a distance. So there we go. Right. I'll put all this away and we'll come back and we'll have a little look and a play with these images on the phone. And then we'll look at them, what they look like uh, when they're on screen. Right, okay, so we've already looked at the two images that have been taken on the bench and basically not been edited or cropped or altered in any way. So now we'll have a look at the images we took that we're going to modify. So there's the bench one we took, there's the lift bench one, and then this is the one on the background that we've taken too. So this uh, is going to need some editing, and I'm going to try and edit this quickly and simply just using my basic phone settings. Now... Again, I've got no idea what I'm doing, but we'll try our best. So first off, let's crop it. We don't need all that background, so we can get rid of all of that. We can bring us into the model and have a nice look at that. So there we go. That's, oh, that's better already. Now, the colour looks a little bit bright there, so I'm going to try and alter that a little bit. I think it's a little bit overexposed. So we'll touch that back. So there's the exposure. We've got the brilliance, which again we'll just take back a touch. Got the highlights. Now with the phone, you can actually scroll up and down and see things how they make a difference. Now the colour's a little bit light there, it's hard to see, but you'll see it when we look at my original images on the computer. Again, shadows, just, just grab the image. We're not altering the picture of the model, we're just altering the image that the camera's caught. And just play with these things. So you've got contrast. Just, just change things until it adds or improves or makes things worse. Brightness. And just tweak it till you get a nicer looking image. Now I've got the black point. 
which again, I always find a black point makes a bit of a difference. Then we've got the color saturation. So again, you gotta be careful here because it's not that color. To my eye, more like just looking at the model yeah I think pretty uh, probably let me have a look probably going to be about there it's hard to tell we've got vibrant which again I think we can pretty much leave on zero warmth which again we can pretty much leave on zero tint We can pretty much leave on zero sharpness. We don't need to touch definition, no noise reduction, and vignette, which we can do a little bit. Same way we did it on the Mac. In fact, doesn't really need doing at all. That's pretty good out of the uh, thing. Now, if I grab my model, I look at these side by side. It's a little bit too purple to my eye, so I'm going to change that set in a touch, and we'll do that with let me have a look the saturation so i'm just looking at it i'm trying to get it the color i think it should be is to me it looks a little bit too purple let me get the exposure Look and again, just tweak all these settings. So basically, on the phone, we've got there's an auto one, which isn't great. We'll get rid of that one, and it's it's set everything back to zero. <laughs> so we'll do it again. So we've got our exposure, which I would say it's a little bit overexposed. We've got our brilliance, which again just needs bringing down a touch. Highlights brought down a little bit shadows and again just play with these just scroll up and down move things around till you get an improvement that you're looking for don't adjust things too much if you can help it though you don't want to really change the color of everything There's a contrast. Uh, we've done the saturation. Just keep moving things around until you get the color to match what you're seeing with the naked eye. Now, these are definitely flawed compared to a proper camera because my camera picks up the color a lot better. Let's have a look at that. What does that look like? Well, that doesn't look bad, does it? Not too bad at all. So there's that one. So that's the photo edited a touch. But to me, we've lost a little bit of the colour. There's a little bit too much colour there. And then we've got the picture from a distance, which we will crop a touch. Like so. Don't forget, we don't want to see the background. We're not interested in the background. We just want to see the model. We want it zoomed in so we can see it, to have a look at it, appreciate it for what it is, rather than getting this, you know, massive background. Because the difference between that and that is a picture composed is a world apart. That to me is more pleasing. We can see your model well. That we can't really see anything at all. So what I'm gonna do, I've done a very quick edit on that. It's literally a few what minutes of that i'm going to put all these onto the imac and we're going to have a little chat as we go through each picture and just quickly discuss what we've got okay so the first picture we took is just on our bench not the best well lit picture from a bit of a distance and uh, while we can see the model and it looks like it's got a bit of a shine to it i don't think it does the model really all that much justice you're not in properly it's not properly lit, it's not properly cropped. You've got loads of background clutter to distract you from the model. 
And I think overall, it's not the most appealing of pictures. Like I say, be proud of what you built. Try and get the best picture you possibly can. Lose the background clutter. Getting close to your model. I don't mean ridiculously close, but getting close. You could crop this picture and it would look better all by itself. Losing some of the background. But a sheet of paper, white black card, white A4 paper, a sheet, a bin bag, anything at all would be better than a cluttered bench. This is obviously in my opinion. Uh, but obviously looking at pictures week in, week out on the group and on the show, um, you, they do look better when they're on a much more uncluttered background. Okay, same model, same picture, almost the same angle, but we've got the light on now. And uh, even just adding light, it's not properly you know, put down the front of the model, it's literally overhead. Just adding a little bit of light has made a difference to the picture. It's added a bit more depth to the paint. Uh, we can see the model a bit better. So you can just see, just adding a bit more light makes a huge difference to the model. We've still got all the background clutter. We're not really zoomed in or cropped into the picture properly. So it's still not doing the model any justice. Um, but adding the light, light is very important to photography, has made a huge difference just all by itself. We've all, we all possess a light, be it an overhead modeling light or a window that you can use as light behind you as a source. So use that to your advantage because it makes a big difference all by itself. Now we put a background in a single sheet of black uh, paper. In the background, we brought our light down to the bench, and you can instantly see the difference in the model. It's a lot better lit, color looks better, you can see the depth of the paint, and as a model, it looks a whole lot more pleasing to the eye. So, a vast improvement. We can actually see the interior on this now, the belt, we can see a lot more detail, and it does make a huge difference. But again, this can be improved on. You're all at home on a smartphone. They are capable of taking not bad pictures. And with some editing, we can get a better picture. Um, and just make your model look that little bit better. So we'll add this and then we'll have a look at the edited picture and then put them side by side and see what we think looks better. So this is that exact same image after some very basic editing on the phone itself just on the phone settings took me what three minutes couple of minutes the more you did it the quicker you get and it makes a big difference to how the model looks it really does we just edited the light in a bit saturation on the model brilliance um and obviously we cropped it and coming a little bit closer and to me aesthetically that is a much more pleasing photo and would certainly catch my eye more than a cluttered bench or a not well zoomed in picture. And just by some simple photo editing uh, to make the model look like it does to your own eye has made a huge difference to how this picture looks. So this is pre-edited, not a bad picture by itself. This is edited. I think that's a vast improvement. Pre-edited, edited, pre-edited, and edited and i think to me that makes a big difference to how it looks this one is too far away from the model the color's a bit lost this with some tweaking we zoomed into the model better it just looks overall more appealing and makes the model look like it should do like it does to the naked eye it's cropped well it's edited you know a little bit to add a bit of the color back uh, it's definitely making a big difference overall Okay, this is the original image we got off the camera. Not a bad picture straight away. Obviously, I'm using a mirrorless camera, which is basically on auto with a few settings tweaked. But it's pretty well composed, very well lit. Um, not too bad at all. The only things we need to tweak, the color's been lost a bit. It's a bit washed out. Um, we just need to remove some of the dust that's landed on the model. Like I say, I'm not going to manipulate the picture of my model. The flaws are what they are, like I showed in the number plate glue mark. Uh, but what I want to do is, you know, get the, the model to look like it does to my eye. So I normally have the model sat next to me, looking at it, thinking, is the color right? Does anything else need adjusting? 
um, not to fool people, just to get it to look like what it should do to me. So with just some basic tweaking, uh, we can get it to look a little bit different. Okay, so this is my final image. This is the image that I would release normally, uh, and there are pictures of it exactly like this. So it looks a lot better. The color's more vibrant, exactly how it looks to my eye. Uh, it's cropped well. We can see the model well. It's well lit. Uh, the depth of paint shows through. There's other things that could improve, like the light uh, showing through on the windscreen. I could easily get rid of that. Um, but it's just one of those at the end of the day. We've got the glue mark on the number plate. It's still there. That's a flaw. I will work on that in my next model and make sure that doesn't happen again. And that's how we learn and progress. So for me, while the phone is a quick and simple solution, I think a camera is the better way, but work with what you've got and make the best you can out of that. So I think what we can take away from this is the background, losing the clutter background makes a big difference to the model. It really, really does. Whilst it's quick and easy to take it on your bench, grab a sheet of paper, grab a bit of card, grab a sheet, even a bin bag, anything at all you can lay out to remove that background will make a difference and make you focus on the actual model instead of what's hanging around the background. Also, compose the shot well. Get in close. Do Get cropped in with the picture. We want to see the picture of the model, not the photograph as a whole. We're not here to judge a photograph. We're here to judge a model. So we want to see the model. Now, this is a double-edged sword here because I'm telling you to improve your pictures and then say we're not judging your photos. But by improving your pictures, we can see your model better. And that way you're giving yourself more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? More of an not advantage, but you're giving yourself the best chance you've got of A, showing your model in it all its glory. And if it's on the show and you're, you know, showing it in what we've been, what we've finished this week, you stand more of a chance of winning because your model looks a lot prettier. On the flip side, this can be manipulated to make a poor model look better than it actually is. And that's something I don't believe in. Um, so we don't want to see massively photoshopped or edited pictures, you know, of all the uh, flaws gone, or if you've got a bit of what, say, orange peel or a dust mark in the paint. Use that picture to think, I'll improve this next time instead, rather than trying to hide the the faults through Photoshop, because that is cheating yourself. Um, that's morally up to you what you do there. This is me on my soapbox a little bit. It's something I don't believe in. I edit my pictures exactly what I've shown. I'm not removing any flaws on the model itself. I'm just getting rid of, you know, dust that's landed on it while I've been taking the picture. I'm editing the photo so it looks properly like it does to my naked eye. Um, but that's it. I hope that helped a little bit. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below. And I'll get to them as I can. Um, again, I'm not an expert. This isn't. I'm not saying this is the way it should be done. I'm just trying to give some helpful advice and showing how I do it. There'll be some photograph experts out there who are probably climbing the walls going, oh, you've got no idea what you're talking about. You're correct. Absolutely correct. I have no idea what I'm talking about at all. But it's a few things that I do. And my pictures, I think they look okay, for what they are. They show my model as good as it can. Uh, and they're a vast improvement uh, over what they were many, many moons ago. So... That's it. Like I say, got any questions or comments, pop them down below. I hope that's helped. Um, things to take away from this, like I say, background, remove the background, add a bit of sheet, paper, whatever. Uh, get well lit. Uh, we've all got a lamp. Bring it down to the model. Get it at the front of the model so we haven't got all dark shadows along the front. Um, rest your camera on something if you can, be it your tripod for your real camera or your own phone, put it on top of a Coke can. That's a good little tip that I use that every now and then. Use your case to hold it at an angle. Use the timer so you've got it steady. Use the timer or remote on your proper camera too. Um, and make sure um, you try and get a depth of field, which is quite hard to do sometimes, so that the whole thing is in shot. I try and focus on that wing mirror, and that way it's sharp from front to back. Using a phone is going to have its limitations, and for me, the phone picture is not the same as my camera. The camera picture is much better in my opinion. Um, but they're simple things to make your picture better. Then you can go into your photo editing and tweak them a little bit um, to make them look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. But, you know, there's a fine line between 
tweaking it and removing the flaws. And I think that's something um, that only you can decide if you're going to do that. So there we go. Thanks for watching today. I will catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.